So, you're used to us talking about bourbons. That's fair. We're bourbon real talk. But we love rye too. And if you want to know what our top 10 ryes of all time are, you need to stick around. So before we get started, we'd love to thank all of our Patreons that support us on a monthly basis. If you don't know, we do have the opportunity on patreon.com for you to subscribe, make a monthly donation, but it's not just a donation. There's a lot of member benefits for you. So first off, we are going to have distillery takeovers. That's one of the funnest things that we can offer for people. We go in king for a day, private tour, get the taste out of barrels, all of that stuff. We have single barrel selections. We have bonus content behind the scenes, massive discounts on merch. And for our top tier, the collector tier, we have an exclusive Patreon only uh, challenge challenge coin, coin that uh, Lindsay here designed. Thank you. And so if you're interested in hearing more, please click the link in the description below. Go over to Patreon and get signed up. Uh, you not only get all those benefits, but you also know that you're supporting this channel and its mission. So uh, little disclaimer. Okay. So these are our our yes. top. We need I don't think either one of us had 10 rise that were in our favorite. So we yeah. split the list. Yeah. So she has five that are her mm -hmm. five, and I have five uh, that mean, are my five. I mean, technically it's six and four. Oh, really? Yeah. I th okay, I thought it was five and five, but that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Some of hers probably would have been on my list, sure. possibly vice versa. Uh, but we're gonna give you a top 10. Yep. Because you guys love the number 10. They do. The algorithm does, for sure. For sure. All right, so uh, also, no particular order here. So we're not ranking them from yeah. one through 10 or anything like, like that. It's just what we like to drink. And if you're interested in rise, these are the ones that we'd recommend that you seek out. Sure. All right, so what's A number one? And you know, I feel like I should just start. Start. Uh, with Angels Envy Rye. This yes. is my favorite. And that not only is this Angels Envy Rye, but this is my favorite batch of Angels Envy Rye in my Specially engraved. Specially engraved. Bottle. What's it? Read it for the people. Um, for my whiskey partner in crime. Whiskey partner in crime. That is me. It has her name. Yeah. Because it's her favorite whiskey. Whenever uh, I went to the distillery, I had that etched. Took it home. It did not taste like all the other batches. There's actually a lot of batch variants with Angel's Envy Rye. Uh, some of them taste more like creme brulee. Some of them taste more like maple syrup. Uh, some of them have like a bananas flambe thing going on. And this one was a little bit unique. And so what did you do uh, to try to find more? <laughs> uh, well, I shared it with everybody that came over to the house first. I was like, okay, taste this and then taste the regular and then taste this. And then, then I created kind of an army of people that really liked this match. Um, and people were searching for it. Yeah, um, so everybody from our local whiskey community was searching for uh, was it 12 L? Yes, it's 12. Don't it's 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 not, long it's since gone. gone, but it's 12 gone. L. Um, and we did find some bottles in it? Utah. In Utah, so of all places. Some friends of ours were on vacation. They were like, "Is this the bottle?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes, it don't is." Don't play. Buy it all. <laughs> Buy it all. Um, uh, so we ended up with three bottles of this. There was another batch that I found. So I, I you know, I, I find ones that I like that are. I, I know this whiskey well enough mm -hmm. that. Um, I know when it's special. Yeah. And then I buy the special ones. Yeah, and then we had this weird conversation in the liquor store where she's like, how many can I get? And I'm like, <laughs> how in the <laughs> hell could I tell you how many bottles you can it's get? True. Look at this. Okay, yeah. so she gets to buy what she wants. for much whiskey. No, not much. No, not much at all. Okay. All right, what's your number two? Um, okay. Uh, the Barrel Proof Rye from, from Jack, Jack Daniels. Daniels. Uh, we got that at the distillery when we... Um... The Thomas Handy Killer. It is so it's good. So yummy. I'm going to drink this one real quick because my glass is empty. And I think that they're releasing another Barrel Proof Rye. They are. And it's, it's not, not like the special release. It's not supposed to be rare. Uh, but uh, we went on the tour. I was very excited uh, to be able to get some Barrel Proof Rye. I asked them if they had any. And they said only in the Tennessee Tasters. That's what mm -hmm. these little half bottles are. And I said, okay, is there a limit? And they said, no. I said, can I buy a case? And they said, yes. Mm -hmm. So I get a case from under the table, unopened. It's 24 of these little bottles. I put it on my shoulder. I'm walking out of the place with Wes and Lindsay in front of me. I think no one can hear me. 
and Wes, you're going to have to bleep this part out. But as I walked <laughs> through the door, I said, this is how you leave Jack Daniels like a motherfucking boss. And then I looked to my left and there was a couple sitting on a chair behind the door. A sweet older couple in a little rocking chair. They died laughing. Um, and so, you know, word of the wise, be aware of your surroundings. True. If you have a potty mouth. What yeah. you got for number three? Um, Redemption Rye. Um, and this is a rum cask finish. Um, so similar to Angel's Envy. Yes. Um, so this one, I believe somebody that knew that you loved Yes, they brought that because they, I love this. They it. brought this as a gift, and uh, ironically, when she first opened it, she didn't like it. Yeah, and now I do. And now she does like it. I like it. it a lot. Might have been having a bad palate day. Um, I mean, it was probably with the, when we do pick up with pours at the house, I generally am drinking wine, because mm. I know how to drink wine for four hours. I don't know how to drink whiskey for four hours. Yeah, it takes a special skill. Um, <laughs> I haven't developed So that. you're noticing a pattern. She likes rum finished. Um, <laughs> Bit. So whenever the Prideful Goat releases its first finished product, it will be a rum finish. Uh, not necessarily because I thought it was best for the market, but because I'm married to her. And when you have that kind of control, you just do what makes your wife happy. Do it. So when you guys out there are buying thousands of bottles of rum finished rye from the Prideful Goat, you can thank her for that. What do you got for number four? That was four? a curtsy. You can't see it from behind. Oh, me. yeah. It was a great curtsy. That's what I did. I can see from over here from the side. That's it's great. Curtsy. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rosewood rye. Rosewood rye. This is from our friend Jason Giles. Um, if you're interested in getting in, the, you won't find this in your stores all over the US. It's in Kentucky and in uh, so, some select some, locations yes. in Texas. Uh, but you can get it at bourbonoutfitter.com. Yeah. Um, I love this rye. Ships to 43 states. Yes. Um, it's got a little bit of a sweet tea flavor. And I always say, like, I don't drink sweet tea. Like, yeah. I don't love it, but I love the smell of sweet tea. And this is infused with that, um, yeah. essentially. It's, it's super yummy. I love it. Yeah. Uh, what do you got for number five? Uh, Sagamore Spirit Rye. Sagamore, Sagamore Rye. Yeah. Um, we did a, um, a women's event through Someone Say Whiskey um, where we got to um, talk with one of the reps of Sagamore. Super, super nice people. Great company. Good drinker. I love Sagamore. Yeah. They are out of Baltimore. Founded by the owner of Un... I almost said an alligator. <laughs> you know what's sad is the font's pretty similar. Um, yeah. But founded by Under Armour. Yeah. Uh, so Under Armour Clothing Company founder started Sagamore Spirits. Um, they make amazing whiskey. They're starting to release some of their own liquid. Up until then, they were uh, mostly MGP. Um, they've been very kind to me and my brand, so I love them. Their state rep, Tim, is amazing. We've done multiple single barrels, and you can't go wrong with any of their products. What whiskey will blow your mind that isn't even bourbon and you've probably never heard of? JT Mellick. It comes from a crawfish and rice farm in Louisiana. It's one of the few ground to glass distilleries in the US and it's amazing. How did a crawfish and rice farmer become the producer of one of the best whiskeys I've ever tasted? We're gonna lose money on the rice so we turn it into whiskey. Mike's family are six generation rice farmers in Louisiana. And the thought of not growing rice was unbearable. So when rice prices dropped, they decided to grow rice anyway and turn it into whiskey. I know what you're thinking. Randy, it's rice whiskey. How could it be good? This isn't some half sake. I sent out blind sample packs with five other highly regarded allocated bourbons. And when people didn't know what they were drinking, they liked the JT Mellick more. This whiskey surprised me. Someone brought a bottle over to my house and it blew my mind. Where'd you get the whiskey? Yeah, where'd you get the whiskey? I, I brought it to Randy's house. No, you didn't. Yeah! I, I thought I was the bad cop. No, I'm the bad cop. You're both bad. So if you want a mind-blowingly good whiskey at an affordable price, pick up a bottle of JT Mellick right now. And if there's a vodka lover in your life, don't overlook the vodka. Unlike most vodkas, theirs actually tastes good. To find a shipping retailer or a local retailer near you, click the link in the video description. Clicking the link lets them know that we sent you, so they know to keep advertising with us. Cheers. All right, so that's your top five. Yes. Uh, what? Which one is on my side that that was on your list? Do you remember? TPG. TPG. Okay. Well, it's only fair that they both they be on both lists. It's on both. Lists. It's on both yeah. lists. So this is the Prideful Goat. Yep. Uh, this is the brand that I co-founded with Christopher Hart, uh, partnered with Gulf Coast Distillers, 
And you have been an absolute champion and have ridden with me down to Houston for all of the... Every single release. All of the releases. Um, and yeah, so very proud of this brand. Cash Strength, non-chill filtered. MGPI uh, liquid, 95% rye, 5% malted barley. Um, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but I get a uh, big league chew bubble gum note on this, but it's, it's definitely a sweeter profile. Uh, we, we got our first semi-negative review the other day. Oh. Um, this was uh, ADHD Whiskey's uh, number one rye of 2022. It was number 31 on Fred Minnick's top 100 list of whiskeys from 2022. Uh, but there was a channel that tasted it totally blind. And it's a husband and wife channel, and the wife thought it was too sweet, but she doesn't like sweet whiskey. So That's okay. The husband still rated it a buy. Um, so anyway, we'll take that as a win. Uh, so that brings us to number seven. Let's do this one since we're starting to get into the rare ones because okay. some of mine were uh, were super rare. Uh, but my number seven uh, would be the um, Knob Creek Rye. Uh, particularly the cash strength. Okay. So I like the cash strength knob, knob creek rye. Um, this one is a. Uh, I didn't get the right bottle out. Y'all get the point. Y'all know what cash strength means. But cash strength knob creek is super interesting because possibly my favorite rye of all time is Booker's rye, mm -hmm. and it's only been released once. It's Booker, so it's a cash strength version of Jim Beam's rye recipe. Uh, which is a 51% barely legal rye. Um, and I don't know how much they are per bottle now, but I, I'm rare. guessing it's 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 thousands of dollars, 3,000, 4,000. I don't know how much they are. Um, she got to try one the other day at a friend's house it and it's, nice. it was lovely. And so you can't really replicate that. And the closest you can get is Knob Creek rye because if you get the cash strength, it's a cash strength version of their rye the only cash drink version of their rye, except for the Booker's rye that was released years ago. So uh, different barrel selection process, probably different age, uh, but it's the closest that you can get. So it's on my list. Okay, um, what's next? Next would be Michter 10 year rye. Um, so- And I think I liked that and then not the regular rye, the straight rye, right? Yeah, you didn't like the straight rye, but yeah, she liked I the 10 year like rye. Um, it's, it's a lovely rye, um, it can be, Pretty difficult to get your hands on, uh, but we've been lucky. We've not been without a bottle of Michter Tenure Rye for the last few years because we've we've always been able to find a new one before the last one ran out. But well, we also don't drink it. We just share it with Oh, uh, yeah. This one's so rare we don't drink it. We don't drink it. it. This is just for other people to experience when they come to the house uh, an eighth of an ounce at a time. <laughs> like it, We don't pour whole glasses of that. And this one, you know, when you talk about top ten, this one actually has a rating. Um, this is my uh, number three rye of mm. all time. Okay. Uh, this is Kentucky Owl, specifically batch one. Mm. So what happened with this release is it was a newer product. They released it, I think, at around $120 a bottle. I tasted it, fell in love with it, wanted more. Um, I don't know who the distillery is, uh, because it says it, it's Kentucky straight rye. So it's not MGP, which would be the usual suspect for something that's 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Back when this came out, 11 year old MGP rye was pretty rare, but it wasn't impossible that somebody would have some. Uh, but it's Kentucky, so not exactly sure where it comes from. Um, this one was 110.6 proof um, and 11 years old at 120 bucks. So the next year they released batch two, which doesn't have a tax strip. It's got like a, a copper thing on the top here. So you can tell the difference from across the room. And it was about 10 proof points lower and 189 MSRP. And so I haven't been buying the later versions of this, but this particular release batch one is my number three of all time. Um, and sans counting uh, the Booker's Rye, which I've never owned. Sure. Um, actually, I had a friend pick one up for me when they first released, and nobody knew at this point how popular they were going to be. He calls me back and says, I overcommitted, mm. and I'll make sure that you still get yours if you want, but if you're not 100% sure, let me know, 
it'll help me out in, in fixing some of these other problems. And me trying to be a gentleman and thankful. I said, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, use that bottle for someone else. So I had one and I gave it up and that was the MSRP. Um, but we would have drank it anyway. So I'm gonna call this my number one rye since I've owned it and it's Thomas H. Handy. Um, and this is an interesting one because it's uh, a six-year-old rye. And most of the time you think of like an ultra premium whiskey as being usually north of 12 years old. Um, but rye whiskey ages a little faster. It matures a little faster than bourbon. And so some of the best ones aren't necessarily really high ages. And uh, like we have a Sazerac 18 and it didn't make the list uh, because with that much age, it, it, it doesn't have the rye character anymore to me. It developed some other flavor. So, but these are my top 10, uh, our top 10 rise of all time. Yeah. Um, so if this is your first time tuning in, we'd like to thank you for the view and also tell you a little bit about our show philosophy. We are all about bringing people together around whiskey. And that's something that's important to us because uh, we lost my younger brother to suicide in 2014. Uh, he was in the military, got out due to injuries, but as often happens, he was also addicted to opioids. And in the aftermath of his death, I started to try to analyze as people do who are left behind, what happened? And I realized that um, his, his social fabric around him had unraveled and he didn't have that network or community of people around him that we all look for. And I wanted to find ways to build that community. And I saw the connected power of whiskey. And I figured if I can get you involved with whiskey, whiskey will do the rest of the job and get you connected to others. And so that's part of the reason why we started the podcast. Um, it's also uh, part of the reason why I started to research the online whiskey enthusiast communities to look for opportunities for people to get connected. And we saw kind of a negative side to that, and that is the whiskey trolls. Mm -hmm. And whiskey trolls are um, individuals typically that show a lot of hate to strangers online, usually for the purpose of making themselves feel or look important. And that motivated us to start our own whiskey enthusiast community called Bourbon Real Talk Community. And we don't have any of that troll behavior in there. We don't allow it. We moderate it out. And so we have over 25,000 members. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing. But even at that size, we still have a strongly connected community that are looking out for one another and creating that connection. Um, but the other thing that seeing those trolls taught me was that if those people can hate you online, even though they don't know you, there's nothing that prevents me from loving you online, even though I don't really know you. And that's why we in the podcast the same way each week. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that, that we, we love, love you. you. And we'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Whiskey Troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary. Idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.